The federal government always has wanted to create a searchable database of gun owners in the United States, but the Constitution forbids it to do anything of the sort. The Constitution not just protects the right of the Americans to own a gun, but it also prevents the government from putting gun owners on watch lists. Owning a gun does not constitute probable cause for a search warrant, and the government knows it. Knowing that it's tied by the law and the Constitution, the Biden administration is trying to find loopholes that could be exploited to put gun owners on watch lists or prevent sales of new firearms. And the new administration has never minced its ambitions. The proposal of H.R. 1808, the ban on ghost guns, and the amnesty scheme for braced pistols are a few actions that is taken to crack down on gun owners. The latest addition to the tally is the Merchant Code, which is the perfect plan to create a watch list and subsequent banning of the weapons. While some people are brushing this issue under the carpet, we believe that all law-abiding citizens should be aware of the potential repercussions that it would have. So let's get to it. What exactly is the Merchant Code? The Merchant Code is a four-digit number that's used to describe the primary business activity of a business. Until recently, gun stores did not have a specific Merchant Code. But all the giants in the banking sector have to come forward to collaborate on the creation of a unique code for gun stores. As the new code goes into effect, credit card issuers in the bank would be able to track gun owners and create a watch list of their own. They can also give the data to law enforcement agencies and because it's created by private companies, the constitution or law can't do anything about it. The stated purpose of the merchant code. Banks and credit card issuers were convinced by the Democrats to come up with a new merchant code. And the purpose of this new merchant code was to prevent gun violence in the United States. John Feinblatt, the president of Every Town for Gun Safety, released a statement after Visa, MasterCard, and American Express announced that they would use a new merchant code for the sales at gun stores. It said, Today's announcement is a crucial first step towards giving banks and credit card companies the tool they need to recognize dangerous firearm purchasing trends, like a domestic extremist building up an arsenal, and report them to law enforcement. Can merchant codes really prevent gun violence? Experts believe that the merchant code would have little to no effect on gun violence in the United States. Jeffrey Fagan, researcher of the effects of gun policy and law professor at Columbia University, described the merchant code as something that can keep gun violence at the margins at best. It's quite possible that the change is inspired by an investigation pushed by the New York Times in 2018. The piece enlisted the examples of high-profile mass shooters who use credit cards to purchase weapons and ammunition. Attacks on the Pulse nightclub in Orlando and the movie theater in Aurora were also included on the list. However, even if the merchant code had been in effect during the time of these instances, it would not have been able to prevent them. A large number of shooters described in the investigative piece purchased the weapons from stores that would not have come under the merchant code. The Aurora shooter is a classic example of those who purchased the weapons from Bass Pro Shops and Gander Mountain. The stores are giant chains that sell general sporting goods, camping supplies, fishing gear, and clothing in addition to weapons. Furthermore, most gun purchases are not even made at retail stores, which was pointed out by a survey in 2015. Most people purchase guns at shows, private online sales, or from family members and friends. The Department of Justice also conducted a survey in 2016 to find out where the people incarcerated in state and federal prisons buy their guns. It revealed that just 7% of the criminals had purchased firearms from licensed dealers. The survey conducted that criminals are very less likely to purchase weapons from gun stores. So why is the government pushing for a new change anyway? Well, it was never about controlling gun violence. The government just wanted to create a watch list of law-abiding gun owners to promote its gun control agenda. And since the law prohibits federal authorities to do anything of the sort, the government relied on private allies to further its ambitions. The government was rightly called out for these ambitions by Lawrence Keene, who was a member of the Firearm Trade Association. I don't see how it works. I don't see why it's necessary. And the only reason it's being advanced is for a political gun control agenda. Repercussions for gun owners. We'll get to the potential repercussions, but before we do, take a second and realize that it's not being done to you directly by the government. A group of bureaucrats who are not accountable to the American public has come up with a change that threatens the privacy of law-abiding gun owners, and we can't do anything about it. Yeah, let that sink in for a second. And it's not the first time the anti-gunner has tried to do something like this. 
In 2018, Sorkin proposed to banks to throttle credit cards while weapons were being purchased to reduce the sales of guns. Sorkin's agenda was advanced by Senator Ed Markey and U.S. Representative Jennifer Wexton, who introduced new legislation that directs banks to report quote-unquote suspicious financial activity to law enforcement agencies. Now, with the introduction of a new merchant code for retail stores, everything just falls into place for the government. So now, whenever a citizen purchases ammunition, a shotgun, boots, bags, and bibs at a gun retail store, the data will be logged by credit card companies separately. They could examine and screen the data anytime they want. Worst part, while the banks can see the total amount of purchases, they can't look into the basket of the buyers. So even if somebody has bought fishing gear worth thousands of dollars, it would be seen as a purchase of firearms. And it could raise red flags which can block transactions and cause an inconvenience to a law-abiding citizen. The bottom line is that no matter how the anti-gunners and the government sell it, the gun owner should not buy that the merchant code is designed to protect Americans from gun violence. Looking at the face sheet, it becomes clear that the change can do very little to stop criminals from owning guns. It's because extremist elements and criminals never purchase weapons through legal means. The only purpose of this change is to harass law-abiding gun owners and further the gun control agenda. It's essentially an assault on the Second Amendment rights of Americans, and the worst part of it is it's being carried out by the people who are not even elected. We can't hold them accountable and hence can't do anything about it. Kudos to the Biden administration for finding the perfect loophole, though. So that wraps up our video. We hope you found it helpful, and if so, please leave us a huge thumbs up as we always appreciate that. Also, feel free to leave a comment, suggest any future videos, or ask any questions you have. We love getting to respond to as many of those as we can. And if you subscribe to the channel, welcome to the All About Survival family. We've got lots more videos coming your way. Till then, stay safe, stay awesome, and I'll see you on the next one.